So we'll have to start start with the tune, right? Okay. <laughs> Young man leaning on a walking stick. Little girl's got a broken heart, so it can't be fixed. I tell you, I'm taking aim for that broken heart. But I know it best to shot in the dark. Yeah, I got one foot in the sea, one shore. My eyes only at court four. Eyes only at court four. Eyes only at court four. I've been working a late night shift on Tuesday nights Yeah, I learned a little something about feeling free Oh, I rolled around a beauty Montana with no ID mm. And I wrote you a letter in Bellingham Then I threw it in a lid with some garbage can And I saw the devil out walking the railroad track Saying only cold, my dog shine like that. Cold, my dog shine. Only cold, my dog shine. Baby, go tell me how'd you get like that. Heart of a dreamer ain't much for trust Well that works against both of us You said it once And now you said it too much Here to tell you it's not your gold and not your diamonds You know it is your superhero time And it's the way that you do it so soon It the way that you bite from across the room my hands get sweaty in the candy store Eyes only at court four Eyes only at court four Eyes only at court four Teague, Alexi, everybody is in the studio today. Hi, Teague. Yes, hello. <laughs> How are you? I am, uh, I'm, I'm getting better all right all <laughs> i'm right. really good all right good sounds here. good so we jimmy rigged everything and now it's working yes <laughs> the way that it was meant to be when we first walked in we just wasn't easy to see <laughs> at first <laughs> exactly now that was one of your newer songs off yes. your new album that's mm -hmm. coming out here in a week or two yes april 17th it's coming out. Uh, that song, it's uh, the song itself is actually a couple, few years old. Okay. I've um, been playing it. Hobo nephews play that song sometimes, and uh, and uh, and yeah, but it's just coming out on a CD for the first time. All right, sounds good. And now you released that song solo. Yeah. For yeah. The most part. Yeah. We the, we try and keep uh, um, my brother Ian and I, uh, Hobo nephews. We try and keep our our songs. Uh, set, you know, we try and have a separate catalog of songs for our Hobo Nephew shows and then our own shows. But a couple songs cross over, and you know, if if a song is just kind of fun to play and kind of bring something out, you know, we'll, you know, we're uh, we don't hold anything back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if we want to play, a so you know, we don't, you know, we don't set up any real strict guidelines about that. Mm -hmm. But but uh, yeah, it was uh, it was uh, recorded on this. Uh, album I'm putting out called This Dance, which has been a couple years in the works, um, in between tours with the Hobo Nephews and things, and uh, it was recorded down in Minneapolis with a good friend of mine named Eric Koskinen, outstanding, outstanding player, and uh, singer-songwriter in his own right, and uh, I've always been a big fan, and we've always wanted to make a CD together, even though we knew it wouldn't necessarily be easy, mm -hmm. you know, because we both have uh, other things going on, and, uh, and he's down in Minneapolis and I'm up north so uh, but we uh we made it happen you know it took, right. a, it took a, a while but uh we made it happen and we're proud of it and 
Got it right. All right. And yes, <laughs> coming out. <laughs> Sounds good. And now you have a CD release party April 28th. April 28th is uh, the Duluth CD release party at Tycoons. Uh, they have a good stage there. I think. And uh, Eric is coming up to play the show with me and, and another guy from his band named JT Bates. And Ian's going to come up and be part of the show and also Mark Gartman mm -hmm. from uh, Too Many Banjos and other uh, other Duluth, Duluth acts. Um, so... So yeah, I'm ex yeah, it's, I'm excited. It's gonna be All a good right. night. Well, yeah, it sounds very exciting. Time to get excited. <laughs> All right, sounds good. <laughs> so why don't we talk about uh, Hobo Nephews for a couple minutes now? Yeah. That's a band that you and your brother Ian play in. Mm -hmm. uh, how'd you guys get started on that path? Well, he, uh, I think it, I think what started us down that path was uh, me living in rural Minnesota, northern Minnesota. And uh, that kind of changed my perspective on music a little bit uh, after growing up in New Jersey and spending a few years in San Diego. Um, then when I moved to Minnesota, like different types of music in the Midwest and just different mentalities. Um, I think, you know, a after a while, you know, I, there's a train that goes right by my house and everything, and you know, and, and just being out there and, and uh, something about Something about Minnesota and the Midwest, at least for me and my personal experience, has made the blues and roots music relevant, a lot more relevant to me than it was growing up in New Jersey, mm -hmm. you know, um, or San Diego. You know, whenever I heard people playing the blues, it didn't seem, it didn't, it seemed out of place. And and when I heard people playing it in the Midwest, um, it it didn't seem like that. It seemed it seemed like very natural and very part of the very much part of the land and part of the train going by my house and all that you know I mean to put a romantic slant on it um so that those are the those are the songs that started kind of coming out of my guitar after a while and I and I um kind of had this collection of songs and Ian moved out from Vermont and kind of had some similar similar ideas you know of just kind of stripping stripping things down a little bit from how we we learned to play you know because we were jazz you know we're both into jazz a lot and you know that that influences your playing and and you kind of and you try and learn you know you try and learn all these things you know and when you're a musician at first and then for me coming back to uh to play roots music and it was really um kind of stripping down you know stripping down everything i learned you know to the to the you know trying to you know to use music as <laughs> bass you know and not mm -hmm. not get too complicated but just kind of get down to the down to the core of it mm. and to see simplify. what you can do with it yeah simplify yeah. and like you know which can kind of open up other things you know if you're if if the song structure is simple you know then you learn you learn how to uh i don't know you just learn how to make it move i guess a little mm -hmm. bit instead of instead of thinking about other things but so that was kind of the idea that we wanted to uh we wanted to just simplify the music and simplify you know everything you know to the point where it's just like we know we're going to set up shows and two of us are going to hop in a car and go and play anywhere where mm -hmm. you know anyone will let us play and uh you know as a put which is a little simpler than you know having a whole band and a, and a van and you know organizing everyone's <laughs> schedules and you know and and trying to do that you know is a, is a, a lot of uh a lot of paperwork you know and, and things like that so so we just try to simplify everything and that was the that was the idea you know to, to play more you know as a musician instead of uh planning you mm -hmm. know you know um just so that was the idea and uh and and it was a long you know we wanted to have it be something you know kind of front porch type of music that we could play now and we can mm -hmm. play you know 40 years from now you know and uh and you know and now it's been hasn't been 40 years but it's been uh seven years 2005 is when we started that so okay um but yeah, it's going. It's uh, mm -hmm. it's it's going great. We're getting ready to record another album. Okay, and, uh, as Hobo Nephews. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. We've well, been, that's uh, very exciting. Yeah. I'm really excited now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah. uh, I still remember it was one of the first times I had ever hosted the Dean's List, and I was rummaging through our uh, massive section of local music over there, <laughs> and I found the CD, and it's 
you know, kind of tattered, been worn out and used a lot. And I plunked them in, and I it was the traveling show song. And I was just like, holy cow, who are these guys? Oh, man. So I never thought I'd be talking to one half of them. Uh, yep. Well, thank yep. you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, um... So you and Ian, did you start out, you know, playing together, playing jazz together, or was it more of a, a no, separate kind no, of thing? No, and and you know, I might be overstating my own my own jazz abilities a little bit, <laughs> but um, I, because uh, I really was in the jazz when I first picked up the guitar. I mean, and you know, more as like a listener, mm -hmm. and you know, but I try, you know, I, I tried to learn, you know, a Mingus song or two on guitar and, and things like that. Um, kind of total. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, but um, we were living in different parts of the of the country up okay. until I I uh, moved away from New Jersey after high school, and uh, Ian followed suit a couple years later, and I was living in California. He was living in Vermont, so we weren't. And when we were kids, I didn't pick up the guitar until after I left New Jersey. Right right before I left New Jersey, I started playing guitar. So mm -hmm. I, so um, we. Uh, we didn't really start playing together until until he moved to Minnesota and you know it took I think he moved in, to Minnesota in 2003 and it took us took us maybe a year or so to, to kind of figure out what we wanted to do and and how how to do it you know it wasn't it wasn't really uh, um, you know it took a little it took a little work you know a lot mm -hmm. of people think it's like oh you guys are brothers you know you guys have been you know playing playing Grateful Dead songs together, you know, since you're 13, <laughs> you know, and that, that's partially true, but, uh, but not really, um, so, you know, we kind of come from different musical, musical background, I mean, we have common ground, and I think that our biggest common ground, um, was, was another I idea of the Hobo Nephews was to our, a really good way to find our common ground was to go back, you know, f keep going back, it's like, well, what, me you know, from the, we know when we were growing up, you know, Ian liked heavy, me you know, it was more like heavy metal, and I liked hip hop, and but we also liked this and this and this. Okay, well, let's go back another decade. You know, well, we both like this, we both like this, but he likes this, and mm -hmm. I didn't like that. Okay, let's go back another decade. You know, and then <laughs> and by the time we get, kept going back, it's like okay, yes, you know, we both agree that Lightning Hopkins is absolutely the man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. or Sonny Boy Williamson or Woody Guthrie. You know, like the people that we kind of modeled. Uh, modeled the hobo nephews after mm -hmm. and uh you know so that and it was a reason to go back and dig into that music you know just as as musicians you know it's pretty uh you know it's important stuff to to go back to oh you know, definitely it's like, uh, for you know and all that early r recorded stuff is really really interesting you know before you know, the world's changed been changing rapidly ever oh. since so <laughs> it's it's uh hearing that stuff is really you know it's it's invaluable you know you gotta you gotta look into it at some time you right. can't just like right. you know play jazz all the time without learning to play the blues <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah they all stem from something and start from somewhere and right right yeah so, so just going yeah going back that mm -hmm. was that was one of the ideas you know because we talked about like i felt that was a hole in my in my music at the time you know when i when i got to minnesota i kind of i realized it so i you know i uh, i decided the best way to to remedy that was just to form a band where we go out and play mm -hmm. that music every night or you know take it more in that direction mm -hmm. so definitely uh one thing that people probably don't know or don't see if they haven't seen you guys play or heard your solo work is actually how different you both are but mm -hmm. yet you're you ride this parallel kind of with each other which I think is really cool because it gives a whole different dynamic to your band and even your solo career is definitely like I even when you guys sing you can hear it too which I think is kind of amazing so did that kind of come about when you guys were not living together basically and kind of came up with your own unique sound and then merged together again yeah 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 definitely you know I, th I think we both put um you know, it's you know, it's when you're when you're in a band. I I always like being a, like a team player. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And not like a, um, not like a wildfire. You know, I'm not. If I'm in a band, I don't want to be the Jim Morrison of the band. You know, like you know, <laughs> like you know, it, it's 
you know, we're we're kind of both fifty percent leaders mm -hmm. and fifty percent backing musicians mm -hmm. in that in that band. So, um, you know, so there's a responsibility to kind of keep it cohesive, you know, and not not bring in these crazy songs that are going to take the hobo nephews, you know, mm -hmm. to just because I'm on some personal, you know, poetry, you know, <laughs> free avant-garde poetry kick or something doesn't mean that it needs to be brought into the hobo nephews, mm -hmm. you know, for for that time or whatever. So, you know, I think we both, you know, try to respect what, what the hobo nephews were trying to do from the beginning and kind of, you know, mm -hmm. keep that going. And then with our own thing, it can be more artistic you know or individual right. or personal mm -hmm. you know and uh and you know it, it just seems to work better that way yeah definitely so you get uh you get one slot of doing your own thing and then you come together do something as a team and then you also have that creative freedom to be your own self too right yeah so, gotta, all right i um going. i noticed on one of your cds that ian actually plays guitar on you know one of your solo mm -hmm. records and then uh I don't know if you play on his. I guess I haven't really looked Do into I that yet. I played harmonica on one of his records. Oh, okay. All right. Mm. So then it, it's still almost a team effort. Yeah, he plays organ, actually, on a song on the new record. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, you know, we're always involved. And, and uh, I shot the picture on his album cover. I didn't play on his last record, but <coughs> but I uh, I took the picture on the album cover. Okay. You know, I mean, we're just, yeah. you know... <laughs> trying to be positive forces in each other's uh, mm -hmm. solo careers however we can because you know ultimately it all works together mm -hmm. you know um, you know when we travel around you know we sell a lot of our own CDs at Hobo Nephew shows and stuff you know I mean it, it all right. in a way is is, uh, is all together so mm -hmm. try and keep it that way <laughs> <All> <laughs> you know, and you know good. try and keep it you know I don't know I'm like a community guy and I'm, I'm like and uh you know, I, I like to think that everything is just kind of part of the mm -hmm. part of each other. Right. You know, I kind of, I don't know. I was actually talking to Rob Nelson not too long ago, and uh, we were talking about being in the in the web of community and music and art that is in the Northland and how everybody's a part of that. You know, whether you want to be or not. So <laughs> I thought it was really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I really appreciate it because I, from the music communities that I lived in before. Um, and uh, they were, they were nothing. You know, there's nothing like homegrown. Mm -hmm. You know, where like, the whole community comes together and the mayor's behind it and the local <laughs> press and you know, and the whole city rallies behind it. You know, that that really, uh, you know, that was really admirable. Though, the, for the people that put in all the hard work to get that started and mm -hmm. everyone cooperating, you know, and, and getting behind that. I mean, that's that's rare. You know, really rare. So <laughs> I, you know, that. So I feel like it's promoted, you know, camaraderie's kind of always been promoted as I've, you know, as long as I've been around mm -hmm. Duluth, you know. Um, so, you know, you just go with it. All right. <laughs> All right. It sounds good. How about good. I'll, I'll, play, uh, I'll play the song that Ian played harmonica on. All right. I was or actually... No, I'm sorry. Ian played... Uh, Ian played organ on this. Oh, on okay. Song. I was actually going to ask if you had yeah. another one for us. Yeah, this is called... Uh, Riding on a Ferris right. wheel. You know, I got a tune though. Oh, okay. That gives me time to drop a spot in. T Galaxy is in the studio here on the Acoustic Dean's List, and I'm your host, Simply C. You're listening to 91.3 KUWS in Superior, and this is the Acoustic Dean's List, and Teague is tuning the guitar. Yeah, you know, one of our, uh, I didn't mention this in our, our line of uh, things that weren't going easy for us today <laughs> but uh my tuner's not working for oh me. no Big head around that one with girls dancing poet 
If not sleeping on the floor and riding no Ferris wheel wearing big hat. No, it's not a half bad story, depending on who tells it. So wind up your tongue, loose your lips. Don't be selfish, you got lightning in your cereal. Thunder on your toes, you're so lonely. Cursing like you never left the coast. When the man landed on the moon, you had no time for that. You were riding on Ferris wheel well, with a big hat. Draw, happy, long, last, reunited. So don't shoot me, I shoot you first and go wrong. Why fight it? Besides, I'm just a true believer. I don't really know that much. Some see darkness in the alley, some see the gray shortcut. And when the bridge burned down, we're supposed to take us there and back. When riding on Ferris wheel, wear a big hat. Shut up that loudmouth clown and tell it all to a hitchhiking young man on the way to the great carnival and back. Yeah, riding no fair wheel wearing a big head. I'm standing on the corner with nothing to do. Another wonderful song by Teague Alexi. Teague is in the thank studio you. with us. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, why don't you tell me a little bit about that song? That song? Um, yeah, it's kind of a rambler. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's real metaphorical, really. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just kind of like... Um, I don't know. I guess, I guess uh, riding on a Ferris wheel, wearing a big hat. If you look at it metaphorically, you know, it can mean kind of a lot of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You know, just like, and you know, some some of it is maybe a little biographical. You know, if I went back and looked at it, you know, just kind of sometimes, you know, sometimes when you're running around playing music and stuff, kind of kind of feels like that. You know, you kind of feel like sometimes you like play the cowboy sometimes you play the coward sometimes you play the clown <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know um so uh you know just kind of just kind of like a just like a you know <laughs> i don't know i i i like uh i don't know i'd have to think about that a lot but i, I like uh one thing i can say about about it is uh i got the opening line from the standing on a corner with nothing to do. <laughs> I read somewhere that uh, I believe it was William Burroughs said, "Standing on a corner with nothing to do is power." <laughs> so, kind of, and I always, I always remembered that. I think that's who said it, and I and I might have the quote messed up, but I, when I came across that years ago, I'd never forgot it, and I always thought about that if I was ever in the scenario like standing on the corner waiting for somebody or just like you know killing time because mm -hmm. uh, that would happen a lot you know we travel around and I always I always take off you know whenever we get 
to uh, Seattle or Portland, you know, when we're playing, I'll just go and walk around. And a lot of times, I'll f you know, I would find myself in that scenario thinking about that quote. So, and, so I've, and then I end the song with the same quote, so I, I, I put it like that so that the song could almost just be like a daydream okay. kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. where, you, where, you know, you stand on the corner with nothing to do, and then you run through this whole scenario, but then if you're still standing on the corner with nothing to do, it's like, you know, did that... That everything in between even happen, or <laughs> you know, so that's a ba that's mm -hmm. one of the basic premises. You know, I put some thought into it. It's not just a bunch of, <laughs> not just a bunch of. Uh, Who hi? Jibber, <laughs> jibber jabber. Oh, all right. <laughs> a little, maybe a little, maybe a little jibber jabber. But. All right. So lyrically, um, do you kind of obviously you're kind of writing from different experiences that you had. Um, do you have to sit down and really think about a song and write it, or could you just be walking down the street and be like, "Oh, that's a, that's a good chord or a good lyric. I'll, um, I'll incorporate that." Both, both. Both. Yeah, I always I try whenever I come up with, and I you know sometimes I you know I, the best ideas seem to just kind of come in your head when you're not ready for them. Mm -hmm. So I always try I always write it down in a notebook. I keep in my pocket. I, I don't do the cell phone, the cell phone thing. <laughs> um, but I, uh, yeah, and then, you know, and then I'll, I'll get, to, you know, sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, the way life is, you know, a week or two will go by, you know, you got to keep the idea in your head before, you, or at least my life, you know, like, before I get a chance to mm -hmm. sit down, with, you know, where it's quiet and, and, uh, and figure it out. But, but yeah, you know, just, you know, you just, you know, you always have to be, uh, you know, writing with kind of one, you know, you got to have part of your mind on it all the time you know really if you're mm -hmm. a writer any, or any kind of you know creator right you know you almost have to have a little bit a little bit, bit of your head thinking about it all the time or at least on the lookout for mm -hmm. something to inspire you or, or something so all that's right. how I try and roll <laughs> all right sounds <laughs> good so obviously that was you know a song about a quote that's how it kind of came about and things like that do you draw a lot of stuff from poetry and books no 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 I don't um uh no i mean that would be that would be that wouldn't be good you know <laughs> <laughs> i mean no no you can't do that um but you know i i've i've taken an innocent thing here and there you know mm -hmm. and I'll, but um or to me you know i i uh people probably draw the line in different places but you know I, i'm a reader you mm -hmm. know and a, and a student of liter you know my own personal uh you know appreciator of literature and everything so you know that stuff filters through and uh you know i don't no but i don't you know i don't really quote very many people mm -hmm. you know like like that i try and if i do i try and admit it on radio shows so that, <laughs> so that uh you know so that people don't think that i'm not uh plagiarizing uh, yeah thank you <laughs> i don't want to say that word oh <laughs> well i said it for you so uh <laughs> It's all okay. <laughs> the host can go there. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's just like you know that that line inspired me. You know, it's mm -hmm. like an exam, and you know, so set it up, and you know, I think that's okay. Take oh, that yeah. line, and you know, I, I have to go back and look at that quote and see exactly what the quote is. I'm not sure if I took it took it right exactly or not, but well, you made it yours then. All right, yeah. <laughs> Right. So guitar style and stuff like that, we were talking earlier, and you're really influenced by jazz. Um, yeah, at least I was. Mm -hmm. um, Once, were. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, some of it is the guitar that I play now is a uh, it's an old harmony guitar mm -hmm. from the 40s. So it really is just like a blues guitar by nature. I mean, you can play like... <laughs> I guess it sounds pretty all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but mm -hmm. I, I used I was really into chords. Um, I learned to play guitar from a Bob Marley songbook. Oh, okay. And uh, by the time I got through the songbook, I knew a lot of chords, and uh, and there was some a pretty good amount of jazz chords in some of those songs. So I just kind of kept going mm -hmm. with that, and. Uh, and so for a while, I just, I just got really into chords and all these, like, you know, fancy major sevens, you know, and minor nine chords and stuff like that. You know, I really liked the way they sounded when I first started playing. And then, and then the Hobo Nephews kind of, like, brought me kind of back to simplifying 
those chords and just making mm -hmm. them, you know, G major, C one four five, blues kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I'm mostly mostly self-taught. I've I've had a lesson here and there, and I've, I've paid attention. I kind of stole lessons from friends and my brother, <laughs> and 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 things. But it, um, so I'm I'm not really studied. You know, when I say that I'm into jazz, it just means that I you know I tried to play jazz mm. for a little while and then and then gave it up. All right. But you know that that was kind of what I took from it was a lot mm -hmm. of those chords and stuff. Cause I'm I'm really a rhythm guitar player. You mm -hmm. know, I'm not much of a lead player. So. Um, so that was kind of what I took from it, those big, fancy, big chords. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you actually kind of answered my next question. I was going to say, do you and your brother ever borrow from each other? But borrow from each other? Yeah. What, what do you mean? Just uh, like if there's a lyric that one of you says or a quote even, and you're like, oh, I like that. I'm going to turn that into a song or oh, even uh, a guitar yeah. riff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, you got to be careful what you play around Ian. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, and you know, and with the Hobo Nephews, a lot of, we write songs separately for the most part and then bring them together. But mm -hmm. you know, there is a, there's occasional. Uh, I remember Ian helped me with the, s the words for uh, Old Friends and Rent Checks on our last album, just kind of. You know, I mean, you know, just kind of typical. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, oh, you know what? You should change. You know, I've, if you say it this way, it might work better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're like, no, I don't, I don't <laughs> like it that way. I'm going to keep it my way. You know, or, or just like, yeah, yeah. The, oh, you're right. Yeah, I couldn't. I was struggling with that line, mm -hmm. you know. But, uh, so, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm sure that we do. You know, I mean, subconsciously, we, we probably must. You know, we hear enough of each other mm -hmm. playing, so. But we try not to, you know. I, I think we try and keep our things, set, you know, set like together when we're together, and then separate when we're separate. So right, right, definitely. Well, very amazing, very amazing, very cool that you could be here today. Oh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm so excited. I and had nothing honored. to do today at all. <laughs> Don't say that. I'm sure you had plenty to do. <laughs> no, but I'm extremely honored you're in the studio today. It's good to be here. I, I, uh, I've know a lot of good people in Superior, so mm -hmm. shout out. All Should right. I play another one? Yes, please. It's a long way from bottom A long way till the top But I still get up my chair every time I hear the doorbell now and half a bucket can I buckle my stride I am on my way to you but I got a rock on my back a monkey in a bottle Break anything but the girl or the heartbreak ain't nothing but a sucker's pride. It takes some kind of fool hypocrites in the hallway there are 13 guns on the door between doubt and desperation I make myself a spot on the floor but I will be dreaming about second soul street and a bird can sing so sweet. I'll be skipping over holes that the devil digs before my feet anything but the girl or the heartbreak anything but the girl or the 
heartbreak Ain't nothing but a sucker's pride It takes some kind of fool It takes some kind of fool I tell you it takes some kind of fool Another wonderful song. Thank you, Teague. Uh, thank you. Teague Alexi is in the studio, and you're listening to 91.3 KUWS in Superior. Thanks for joining mm-hmm. us today, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I cannot get over how easy it is to listen to your music. It's just, it's smooth and it flows, and it's, I can totally picture you being out on a front porch playing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Tuning because he cares. <laughs> yeah, that's right. As I steal yeah. that quote from Tegan and Sarah. <laughs> yeah. Tegan, you know, that that's my arch rival. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I almost believed you, but you had that look in your eyes, so I'm like, no, he's totally joking. <laughs> when I first... Uh, when I first started playing uh, open mics and stuff in, in San Diego, first got the nerve to play open mics, I I, uh, I met this girl who was playing, and and um, and she well the, the name Teague means which is my real name, mm-hmm. it means you know it has like a Irish bard poet uh, history to the name, so I I met. Right, it was like literally maybe like my third open mic or something, and there's this other gal there who had changed her name mm-hmm. to Tegan. Really? Yeah, because of the the connection to the old Irish poets. Oh, and then okay. and then literally like a week later, I heard of Sarah and Tegan for the first time. So I was mm-hmm. just like, what is going on here? You know? <laughs> and so I always associated her with changing her name. Tegan, although I, I imagine that's probably not true. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. I. But I don't you know, think every superhero <laughs> needs an arch rival. You know, you, need, you know, you gotta have your Ma- Magic Johnson needs his Larry Bird. You know, mm-hmm. versa vice. All so right, all right. Joe Frazier so. needs his Muhammad Ali. <laughs> all right, so you're Tegan Quinn's arch rival, unannounced, of course. Right. No, you we know. just announced it. <laughs> I don't know if she'll hear it or not, but it's out there. <laughs> Sounds good. Then I wonder who Sarah's is. Hmm. Mm. Maybe we'll get Ian. Yeah. We'll get Ian. That would be, be the Sarah's. logical choice. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> Sounds good. So, um, anything that you wanted to hit? I know you're. You've. Uh, excuse me. You're coming out with your new CD. Yeah. Duluth Let's CD see, release we party. Should. We have a new video that's coming out. Soon, okay. Um, for uh, uh, riding on a Ferris wheel. And uh, 
that's that's exciting. We filmed that. Ian helped film that. You know, talking about us working together uh, while we were traveling. We took advantage of of uh, traveling. You know, used that to our advantage to shoot the video mm -hmm. and shot a uh, video where I play like a traveling juggler kind of character. <laughs> so, um, which was cool. You know, and I thought it was pretty. You know, it was because we don't have any kind of budget to make videos or anything. So right. we, we decided to kind of use our travel, you know, mm -hmm. our traveling to our advantage and, and uh, shot it in all these different spots. So I'm excited for that. All right. You know, we have, a, we have a, I don't know, it's kind of cool to get to branch out into trying to make videos and mm -hmm. stuff, you know, like because we know, know some people. You know, we have a, a fantastic friend out in New York uh, named Joshua Priestley, who's a good friend of ours and a incredible filmmaker so that makes it uh interesting you know to pursue mm -hmm. you know with him with him involved uh so so yeah just trying some trying some different stuff right. what else yeah i should probably talk about some other stuff huh <laughs> t galaxy.com okay is uh is uh is a good spot let's see what else what else Fra yeah, is we there said Saturday, august 28th com? yeah but it's actually it all well it's all connected, you know, okay. different, but separate, but different. Okay. There's definitely hobonephews.com. There, yeah, there is. All right. Is. And, uh, yeah, everyone should come out. Everyone, yeah, I hope people like the new record. People should play it loud. I wanna, oh, I love the I wanna, new record. <laughs> yeah, all right, thanks. Do you play it loud? I do. You do? Okay, because I want people to play it loud, because it kind of has, you know, it could maybe pass, maybe pass for like a Sunday afternoon, you know, a quiet mm -hmm. record, you know. It could be that, but... You know, me and me and Eric did the groove, so <laughs> turn turn them up, mm -hmm. turn them up. It was meant to be played loud, so. All right, and then your brother Ian has a new record out as well. He does. Uh, Are he, you listening? Yeah, yep. Yeah, that was an EP uh, he put out last year. He's working on more stuff. Okay. Um, we actually have a pretty good amount of st stuff recorded, both of us, but um. Um, I have a, a most of my next record already done. It's just we, mm -hmm. we've kind of been playing more and not really releasing music. You know, we're kind of right, a little right. behind releasing mm -hmm. music. So, so this is uh, so this album is going to be the first in a line mm -hmm. line of uh, stuff that we'll get out in the next, you know, hopefully a year or two. All right. But uh, or maybe sooner. But but yeah, we've been we've been uh, recording a lot. So. Mm -hmm. All right, and then uh, Hobo Nephews is. Working on some stuff as well. Yeah, we've just been rehearsing, but we're uh, we're talking about uh, we're gonna record uh, this summer, definitely. If All not, right. it might even happen real sooner than that. But um, yeah, you know, All it's right. just all like rolling along, you mm -hmm. know. Definitely. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we try not to put a whole too much pressure on ourselves. So <laughs> sometimes it takes a little longer <laughs> than it should. But uh, you know. Well then, the more time you spend on it, the better it sounds. So. Well, that yeah, that's the idea. You have to get it right. You know. <laughs> exactly. How about I play? Um, All right. I'll play the first song on the, on the CD. Okay. Why don't you uh, take us out with that song? Okay. So thank you so much, Teague, for coming in. Yeah. It's, it's an honor uh, and it's, a privilege. It's great to be here with you guys. Thanks. Thank, thank you, you for all the support. <laughs> Babe looking around 
as if laughter was all that mattered to the old clown. I've been down, out, laid in the gutter over one pair of brown eyes or another, always standing in a puddle out underneath the pouring rain. Well, I ain't the saints I was born to be Broad stroke short of a masterpiece Ain't got nerve to lay my raggedy hat down in front of you But for the little angel on my shoulder Not another little girl will do John Henry was a steel driving man. 